Sean Diddy Combs, the self-proclaimed bad boy of hip-hop. From rumours and allegations to multiple lawsuits, it seems like Diddy's reputation in the industry has come to light, and with it, stories that make other disgraced celebrities look like saints. The only difficulty when talking about these stories is where exactly to start. We could go all the way back to the 90s where Diddy rose through the ranks of a hip-hop war between East and West, stepping over the bodies of his enemies and friends alike, or after that with decades of exploiting his power, influence and wealth to get what he wants. We're going to focus mostly on the recent allegations because honestly the question of whether Diddy had Tupac killed has been asked, answered and changed so often that I feel you've probably already heard it. Though there has been new evidence entered into court, a recording from a police interrogation of an LA crip by the name of Keefe D, who confirms Diddy offered him $1 million for the assassination of Tupac and Suge Knight. A theory that has been discussed at length from multiple sources over the years without any concrete evidence presented. People have always asked, what would be the motive? Why would Diddy want Pac murdered? Well, since that becomes a massive factor for the rest of the video, let's talk about it. Rumours have always circulated about Diddy and his attraction to men, something that has a massive stigma in the hip-hop world, especially for a guy with the bad boy reputation like Diddy was portraying. How could you be the bad boy in beef with the West Coast having any credibility if you were a homosexual man? Not my opinion, it's how people thought, especially during the 90s and especially in hip-hop. At the time, there was a beef escalating between Death Row on the West and Bad Boy on the East, and it would have been the end of Diddy's career had this come out. So with hundreds of millions of dollars on the line, ending that beef with the death of Tupac and Suge Knight would provide a pretty juicy motive, something that will gain credibility the further we go with even more allegations going forward. On November 16th, 2023, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, R&B singer and ex-girlfriend of Diddy, filed a lengthy federal lawsuit against the powerful hip-hop icon. This was picked up by media outlets and the news spread like wildfire. The allegations were incredibly damaging and most I can't even say in this video, so you're gonna have to forgive some censorship. Facts of the matter first, Sean Combs entered into a relationship with Cassie when they first met in 2005, when she was 19 and he was 37, which in and of itself is weird for a 37 year old to do, but not illegal. Obviously there's a massive power dynamic at play here and quick warning going forward you're going to hear descriptions of abuse that was outlined in official court documents which I believe is important to tell for documentary purposes but can be disturbing for some to hear. Also anything I say after this point is an allegation as outlined by said legal documents and I'm repeating it as it was claimed. So from here allegations are not proven true statements. So during their relationship, according to Cassie, Diddy displayed violent tendencies, absurd and outrageous demands, as well as assaulted her, abused her and raped her when she tried to leave. Not just that, but Diddy allegedly punched, kicked and stomped on her, forced her to engage in sexual acts with male escorts while he pleasured himself and recorded the acts, drugged her and others at parties and much more. One specific story that sticks out as plausible since it involves another party who corroborates the event is when Cassie left Diddy briefly in 2011 and started a relationship with rapper Kid Cudi. According to the documents, when Diddy discovered this relationship, she claimed he chased her with a corkscrew, completely enraged. Cassie said that she escaped back to Kid Cudi's house, but was later approached by one of Diddy's many enforcers who convinced her to speak with him. She said she did, she went and seen him, and claimed that he beat her. At that point, she left to go stay with her parents. Then, in February 2012, the lawsuit alleges that Diddy told Cassie he was going to, quote, blow up Kid Cudi's car. Yes, like a gangster movie from the 50s, the lawsuit specifically states that Diddy told her he wanted Cudi and his friends to be home when the car exploded, presumably to send a message to stay away from his girl. Around this time, Kid Cudi's car did, in fact, explode in his driveway. This is confirmed by a spokesperson for Kid Cudi after the lawsuit went viral, meaning that either Cassie colluded with Kid Cudi to create this lie for the court, an illegal act in and of itself, or at the very least, this part of the story could be true. The lawsuit goes on to say, in great detail, many other events, similar abuses and displays of power. The way that Diddy's described is like that of a movie gangster, surrounded by henchmen and protected by immense wealth and connections. 
Now again, everything in the lawsuit is an allegation and how lawsuits typically go is that they are filed and then fought over multiple years, likely costing millions of dollars before the truth comes out and then the case is resolved. So I want you real quick to put yourself in the position of Sean Diddy Combs here. You're worth hundreds of millions of dollars, close to a billion. Someone files a lawsuit against you, claiming very publicly, you're the worst person in the world. You're a rapist, you beat women, and then you threaten and control the people around you. You're just terrible. So you've got these allegations, they're in court, they're there black and white for everybody to read and see, and you have all the money in the world to fight that, to clear your name, to prove that you are not the things that they claim. Obviously, if it's all lies, you probably are going to try and fight it, right? Because that's what an innocent person would do. But what's weird about this is that within 24 hours of that lawsuit being filed, Diddy and Cassie reached an out-of-court settlement agreement with rumours being eight figures of money paid out for dropping the lawsuit. Now, as someone that's followed many lawsuits for businesses, private and public individuals, I've never seen a lawsuit settled within a singular working day. It just simply doesn't happen that quickly. So what can we deduce from these actions in a vacuum? And I say in a vacuum because we're going to try and ignore the decades of allegations against Diddy from multiple people. With one lawsuit, without a whole bunch of evidence present, you could say, he said, she said, he may have done some of them, all of them, or none of them. But there are only a few reasons that you would settle a lawsuit like this, claiming these things in this way. The first is that you know you did some of what is alleged and you don't want to risk that being proven in court. The second is that you know you are guilty and likely to lose. The third is that you don't have the resources for a prolonged legal battle, which we know is not true. And the fourth is that even if you are innocent of some or all of the allegations, you're worried about what will become public once it goes to discovery, what damning evidence or witness testimony will be uncovered, and how that will impact your image, your business, or your personal life. So he doesn't necessarily have to be guilty of these things which we won't ever know because it's not going to court, it's been settled. But I don't see any reason not to fight it unless you're worried about what's going to happen if you do. Especially because the optics of settling a lawsuit like this so quickly, with so many other allegations hanging on the line, it's never going to make you look good. Whereas if you were completely innocent, winning in court and proving to everybody that it was all false, that makes you look great. Now, of course, as soon as this lawsuit was settled, more women started to come forward with similar allegations about Diddy's behaviour. Three additional lawsuits were filed, of which are all still ongoing as of March 1st, 2024. When asked about why women were coming forward suddenly, the legal opinion is that once one victim comes forward and shares their story, it gives confidence, credence and strength to others to do the same. So now we're going to move on from the allegations and the lawsuits from former sexual partners, but don't worry, we're going to be back there pretty soon because there's more than just these four. Instead, we're going to take a look at Diddy's violent, negligent and controversial history. As a way to provide context on his life and the type of person he is, according to evidence of other things happening. So let's begin with 1991. The lawsuit involving his ex Cassie, which of course is 30 years later, is not the only one he's ever settled in his day. Not even close. According to this Rolling Stones article published by Andre G, Sean Combs co-promoted a celebrity basketball game and concert at the City College of New York where 9 people died and 29 people were injured. There was a stampede which caused a crowd crush, of course a tragic event, one that was laid at the feet of Diddy in a 67 page report called quote, Failure of Responsibility published by the New York City Mayor David Dinkman's office. For this, Diddy was forced to court and settled multiple lawsuits throughout the 90s and into the 2000s. While these were still ongoing, Diddy was involved in a shooting that changed the world of hip-hop forever. 1995, outside a nightclub in Atlanta. Death Row Records, headed by West Coast gangster Suge Knight, were at the club, as well as Diddy and the Bad Boy Records entourage. When leaving the club, Jake Robles, one of Suge's entourage, was shot multiple times before Diddy and his crew fled the scene. The two rap labels, who operated more like street gangs at this time, were already beefing back and forth at this stage, but this was the spark that lit the whole industry on fire. It was only one year later the Tupac was shot in Vegas, which Diddy is accused of manufacturing, and just one year after that, the Notorious B.I.G. was shot in what is widely considered retaliation. 
But for Diddy, he survived that beef that he started, and he was ready to leave the 90s behind, emerging as a powerful, incredibly rich, and connected music mogul. Except, he just couldn't help but be involved in violent altercations. In 1998, Diddy became enraged about a music video being sent to MTV without one of the scenes being altered. He'd asked one of the managers to edit part out, and they didn't. His response was to break into the office of Steve Stout, who was the manager handling the video release, and allegedly beat him with a champagne bottle. Steve claimed his jaw and arm were broken during the assault. Diddy spoke on this to MTV, apologising, but not going into detail of what he did to Steve. Somehow, despite seeming to admit to wrongdoing, Diddy was sentenced to a singular day of anger management classes. Obviously, it didn't do very much, because in the next year, 1999, Diddy was again at a club with new bad boy signing Jamal Shine Barrow, where someone in his crew knocked a drink out of Matthew Scar Allen's hand. Scar was a notorious gangster in Brooklyn, the type that was rapped about in 90s songs. If a rapper was claiming to be some gangster, Scar was the type of person they were pretending to be. He was really living that life. So in this club, Scar and Diddy's crew argued back and forth, and at some point, shots were fired from Diddy's side, injuring three bystanders. This did go to court, and Scar refused to testify, telling the prosecutors that he had reliable information, Diddy'd put a bounty on his head, and that testifying wasn't possible. Though he did sign a document stating Diddy and Shine both shot at him in the club. According to the assistant district attorney, Scar had claimed to be approached by one of Diddy's associates and offered $250,000 not to testify, but also informed that this was a plot on his life, that when he went to the location to pick up the money, he was going to be killed, a bounty placed by Diddy himself. This was presented in court as evidence by the prosecution. This court case ended with Diddy walking free, not guilty on all charges. Shine, however, spent 10 years in prison and was then deported to Belize, essentially taking the fall and having his whole life ruined. Now for the record, just so you have a complete timeline here, Matthew Scar Allen was later killed outside a nightclub on December 4th, 2011, a single shot to the head. So clearly somebody didn't like Scar and he was a target because this wasn't the only attempt on his life. In fact, just a few weeks prior on November 16th, people shot an innocent bystander three times outside of an apartment owned by Scar's girlfriend in Brooklyn. So as we escaped the 90s, Diddy was involved in multiple behind-the-scenes altercations with other rappers, such as a rumoured fight with J. Cole and allegedly punching Drake outside of a nightclub. There's also repeated allegations from club promoters that Diddy and his crew assaulted them, removed them from clubs forcibly, and more. Then there was the time Diddy allegedly assaulted a UCLA football coach because of a disagreement about Diddy's son. There are claims that Diddy picked up and swung a kettlebell at an assistant's head during that altercation. Then in 2017, Diddy's former private chef also filed a lawsuit against him, alleging that he made her serve him meals while he was naked, while also not paying her for massive amounts of overtime she accrued working the job. This lawsuit, as you'll see, sets a trend for the future. Allegations of improper behaviour toward women settled out of court with cash to prevent things going further, as well as clearly a rage problem and massive amounts of violent altercations. So according to the same write-up by Andrew G for Rolling Stones, who provided a great timeline to follow for some of Diddy's more public allegations, in 2019, four years before Cassie's public lawsuit, another ex of Diddy by the name of Gina Horn also detailed his many abuses. She was consistent in her claims that everyone around Diddy knew of what he was doing to these women, but did nothing to help or step in due to fear of his response. So that brings us back to the present day. If you follow all these controversies that are publicly known, that are alleged in court, and ignore the many rumours that float around hip-hop circles, it's clear there's a lot of smoke surrounding Diddy's life. But of course, without it being proven in court, you can't really see whether there's fire or not. What I will say is that if you're accused of having a bad temper, resulting in one violent outburst, that can be a one-off or easy to hand wave as potential lawsuit chasers or liars. But we're talking about over 30 years of a pattern of behaviour with multiple lives lost and dozens of victims, some of them alleged and others very real. To add to all of this, yet another lawsuit was filed, this time playing into the long-time rumour 
that Diddy is homosexual or bisexual, something that would have killed his credibility in the rap game as a bad boy, but has been hinted at by rappers and industry insiders for years. The latest lawsuit comes from a male music producer by the name of Rodney Lil Rod Jones, who worked with Diddy closely from September 2022 until November 2023. Rodney travelled and lived with Diddy during this time and claims he was subject to multiple assaults and improper behaviour. Some of the things Rodney claims was that he was forced to watch Diddy shower, to procure prostitutes for them both and perform sex acts in front of Diddy while he sometimes recorded, as well as engaged in what he claims are quote, serious illegal activity. Some of this activity is detailed with screenshots speaking about frequent parties at Diddy's homes where he gave drug-laced drinks to guests, including underage girls. Rodney also claims he woke up in a daze one day in a bed with Diddy and two escorts, not knowing what happened to him the night before. In this lawsuit, Rodney claims to have hours of footage and audio recordings proving these allegations true, as well as showed some of the images claiming to be from parties in Diddy's home involving underage girls and sex workers. So for now, these are some of the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs. What I find most interesting is that when the lawsuits were being filed initially in December 2023, Diddy made a public statement that said, quote, Let me be absolutely clear, I did not do any of the awful things being alleged. I will fight for my name, my family, and for the truth. Which is very interesting, because he was given the opportunity to fight for his name, his family, and the truth when Cassie filed her lawsuit but instead he settled out of court within a single day. It will be interesting to see if any of these cases do make it to a courtroom, as I'm sure there will be some very illuminating evidence and testimony presented, but judging from the many lawsuits Diddy has been involved in to this day, I'm not sure we're ever going to find out. Either way, when something gets this big all over social media, all over the news, you can basically guarantee that the person's credibility and reputation is completely ruined. He's already stepping down from leadership positions, he's already been roasted on social media, and it's unlikely to stop at any point. The reason being is that it's very clear Diddy has a reputation in the industry and people have been saying these things about him for decades. They say that he's violent, he's got an out of control temper, and I believe even the verifiably true actions has spoken to prove that point. Either way, from that era of the hip-hop war, it doesn't surprise me that Suge Knight is serving 28 years in prison for manslaughter, and Sean Diddy Combs is having his public reputation utterly ruined. Obviously, with him being such a high-profile individual, it's clear that some people in the industry were probably protecting him and hoping stuff like this never came to light. It's also very interesting that other rappers and people in the industry are being dragged into this whole thing, especially with the latest lawsuit naming some big male rappers discussing them having sexual relationships with Diddy, leading to some very embarrassing, cringe tweets to run ahead of those allegations. Not only that, but due to what's been going on, social media is now combing through Sean's thousands of hours on video across the history of the internet and discovering very weird and saucy clips, of which there are a great many. But the question remains, did he do it?